Uh, so uh, Vera began this, uh, this, uh, her PowerPoint with four questions. And uh, the first one was, why should we digitize legacy dictionaries? The second question was, uh, aren't legacy dictionaries boring? The third question is, isn't digitizing legacy dictionaries even more boring? And finally, isn't teaching how to digitize legacy dictionary unnecessary? So these are the four questions she, she asks, and she uh, says that uh, normally when she begins to teach in her university or in workshops, everybody thinks it's very, very boring. So, but, um, so these are the, the four questions that uh, normally uh, Vera has to answer when she teach or when she gives a workshop or when people come in who are not from our subject field. Uh, so, um, but the answer normally she gave is, of course, legacy dictionaries aren't boring at all, because obviously if you use dictionaries and you discover languages and by the means of language you discover history and culture of the past and their formative influence on the present, so of course you normally like uh, dictionaries. On the other hand, we know that digitizing legacy dictionary is, is a must. So we have to do this because uh, we, we need to um, conserve our, uh, our culture. And so it's obvious that we, have to, uh, that we have to do this work. And if you want to do this work, of course, we need experts to digitizing dictionaries. And if you need experts, then we have to teach them how to do this. So that is the reasoning that uh, was uh, behind the first training school that had been organized in Lisbon. The topic was standard tools and methods for retro-digitizing dictionary, and it was held in July 2015 at the new University of Lisbon. So we had, I think, the three schools were a, a big success in this uh, cost action. The first one, we had 28 trainees, 20 female, eight male from 10 different countries, representing 25 different institutions. We had to see and to work with more than 20 different dictionaries and we had five trainers from four countries. And if you have to ask some question about the training, we have three, I think three of them are here. So we can, we can ask them. <coughs> how did, how did uh, they do this? So, uh, so what they do was in this, uh, in this uh, three minute dictionary madness, as Vera called it, uh, we have to got to know each other and more than 20 dictionaries. So what we did was to use, uh, we asked the students to show uh, during, I think it was three minutes, to have to show the dictionary. And at the end, we could see that we had uh, monolingual historical dictionaries like the historical dictionary of modern Greek, like the Turkish historical dictionary, uh, and we had the revised edition of the German dictionary of, of Grimm Brothers. And we had also uh, bi and trilingual dictionaries. So we had the Polish Latin dictionary, the Chechen Russian dictionary, the Croatian German Italian, dictionary, we had also an etymological dictionary like the Dictionnaire Etymologique de la Langue Serbe, and we had a terminologic, uh, terminological dictionary as, for example, the wine tasting dictionary. What did we do with these dictionaries? 
and uh, what were the topics of uh, this training school. So we had uh, three, three topics. So the first question uh, the trainers tried to answer was how to produce a digital copy of dictionaries and uh, we, they discussed technical consideration like ima image format, scanning resolution and management decision like when they have, when to have the data keyed in and when to apply OCR. The standard tools to be covered range from scanning, OCR and post correction to conversion. Uh, <clears throat> the, trainers provided the, tra the trainers provided the trainees with information and practical skills on how to encode and enrich dictionaries data and uh, they discussed uh, requirements and standards according to the views and functionalities the digital dictionaries should offer its users. And also the trainers provide the trainees with information on how to manage retro digitizing project. And uh, they discussed project design resources, time schedule and budget planning. It was, the aim was to provide the trainees with useful information and practical skills in a way that when leaving Lisbon, they would feel able to approach the digitizing of the dictionary in a standardized way. So how to achieve this goal? So this was a question that Vera asked. And uh, so the classes were combined with theoretical instruction in the morning sessions and in the afternoon hands-on session, giving the participants the opportunity to work on their own material and to learn which steps are necessary to transform a printed dictionary in e into a marked up dictionary as a basis for a database or online publication. Uh, and how did we get about this? So we had creative breaks and in creative breaks we uh, deepened what we learned in theoretical and practical sessions and we could work in a good atmosphere some of the participants hardly wanted to leave the training room in the evening. It was true because I had to close the rooms and they, <laughs> they still were there. So what did they learn? So what are the results of the ENL training school 2015? So uh, the results that we have was a Pecha Kucha and final presentations of the trainees. We had the trainees' presentations in theoretical sessions and we had examples <coughs> of more than 20 dictionaries which, are start, which as a start are available in a Google Drive folder. Furthermore, we identify future challenges as for example so far unsolved encoding problems for existing Mac apps languages like Tay. A result with a high potential was the network of 28 engaged trainees. Ten of them already being members of the action, others joining the action after the training school. So this was, <laughs> this was the official end of the training school in Lisbon in July 2015, but it was not the end of the, the, the initiatives of working group two. So we had a follow-up and to ensure the sustainability of the working group two training activities and to stick together the enthusiastic Lisbon network, we had to follow up, we had a follow-up of the training school one year later in Barcelona. In spring 2016, we offered additional, um, we offered additional instruction in more advanced topics that were not covered in Lisbon, such as the creation of TE, customization with Roma or customizing shortcutting and improving encoding workflows. We confronted the participants with the reality of applying an encoding standard for, to a dictionary and introduced them into XPath I hope it's, and its functionalities. In a joint session with Working Group 4, some lightning talks on different issues led to a discussion in plenary on choosing the appropriate formats in a dictionary project workflow. 
hands-on session tackling challenges and problems while encoding and interlinking dictionaries stood at the end of the extended workshop in Barcelona. The training in Lisbon and the Barcelona led to a collection of best practice samples and the publication of online courses. So, in cooperation with DARIA, Working Group, Lexical Resources and the Horizon 2020 Partenios project, Working Group 2 started something like a playground for lexical data on GTube. The goal of this collection, sorry, Um, the goal of this collection of samples is to illust illustrate multiple approaches to digitizing dictionaries and modeling the data. We collect short information on the dictionary and XML file of an entry and the according image of the printed dictionary. Thus, the collection will be something like a shop giving insights in a lot of dictionaries projects. Working Group 2 is in close cooperation with Daria Teach. Daria Teach is an international consortium founded as an Erasmus Plus strategic partnership, a partnership uh, in higher education, which is producing an online pro platform for the delivery of high quality digital humanities training materials. The Daria uh, the Daria Teach Better Learning Platform launched on 23 March 2017 in Lausanne with four countries and two workshops. One of these courses introduced the theory and practice of digitizing paper dictionary with a special focus on using the guidelines of the text encoding initiative. The course created by Thomas Tazovac is divided in three main units. The first unit, from paper to screen, gives information on legacy dictionaries in general and describes the need to be taken to transform a paper dictionary into a digital format. The U in Unit 2, understanding and modeling lexical data trainees will uh, delve deeper into the topic of dictionary structures and learn how to formally describe various constituent parts of a dictionary entry using extensible markup language. The Unit 3, pay for dictionaries, the trainee will become familiar with best pra practices for encoding dictionaries using the guidelines of the text encoding initiatives. With these initiatives, the educational inputs of Working Group 2 is far from being exhaust exhausted. Our sense of mission will survive the end of the cost action. And one more thing, and now I give the floor to Thomas since he's come there. Back, back <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a little terrified of one more thing because that's what Steve Jobs used to introduce, you know, earth-shattering, groundbreaking products. And now it's not um, that earth-shattering. But um, the, the whole mood of today for me is like in that pop song, there is life after, li cheesy pop song, there is life after love. And there is life after anal. And, and what we are trying to do, especially in this educational realm, is um, to keep the momentum that we have gained with the summer school and this great group of young people that was uh, participating in it. And so um, I'm announcing today that um, Daria, and the Daria Working Group on Lexical Resources will be organizing a Lexical Data Masterclass in Berlin from the 4th to 8th of December, which will be you know, a series of hands-on workshops on modeling, managing, and disseminating lexical data in the same spirit of, the, of our summer school, but really um, addressing more advanced topics. Um, and as I said, we're building upon the momentum created by the Working Group 2 at a crucial moment when NL itself is coming to an end. We will be giving a community of diverse users, advanced PhD students, early stage or established scholars, lexicographers, a chance to work directly with experts in the field. And we'll be producing a wealth of documentation and training materials that can be shared with wider audiences via Daria Teach and other channels. The kind of topics that uh, we'll cover will include um, you know, general m modeling, but also uh, more specific topics like dealing with morf morphology in a digital lexicon or expath for lexicographers, 
or managing digital lexica as online resources using you know versioning machines and all these things that um, subversion github etc that people need to learn if they want to manage the data responsibly the sponsors of this event are daria eu the the old-fashioned Academy of Sciences, no. One of the best Academy of Sciences in the world, the Berlin Brandenburg Ac Academy of Sciences, and Alex Reichen is there, who's helping us a lot with this event. We have gotten generous funding from uh, BMBF, so we will be able to actually pay for the participants to cover their accommodation and, and um, um, traveling costs, Daria Germany and the Belgrade Center for Digital Humanities. Um, I will be sending out an email later in the day with the, with the actual link, so you can send it to whoever um, is interested. The deadline for application will be on the 20th of October, and um, we will be giving stipends. So, um, on that note, you know, we don't have to be just nostalgic that TI, uh, that, TI that NL is coming to an end, uh, but we still have a lot of things to look forward um, in this field. Thank you. <laughs>